So as Sergio said, I'm Lawrence Crowther. Most people call me Loz. Uh, thank you. And I look after a group within Sneak. Now, if you haven't heard of Sneak, we're a developer-first security company. Uh, Sneak, most people mispronounce it. They say Snike or Snick or Sink, but it is Sneak, and it stands for So Now You Know. So now you know how to pronounce it. <laughs> um, kind of a geeky, quirky little uh, acronym there, but we, uh, we're helping developers secure not only their code, but their open source packages, uh, containers, infrastructures, code, et cetera, along the whole sort of DevOps pipeline, DevSecOps. This talk, I'm gonna start broad. I'll go into the agenda so we can look at what we're talking about here. Uh, I'm gonna start broad, sort of general AI stuff in security, just to give you a bit of, bit of context and then go super focused on how we can secure code within the IDE as developers write code. We want to scan that code before we commit it into GitHub or any Git repository, okay? Uh, but I'll just you know, give you a bit of context before we sort of dive into that. And this is mostly demos, by the way. And then um, just some takeaways. And I don't think we're doing questions, right, Sergio? I think you said no questions, but I'll, we'll see how we go. So just a bit of context first. So I've kind of categorized AI in the context of security in three areas. First one is AI-assisted applications. So you know, building applications on top of OpenAI or any other open source LLMs. What are the security implications there? You may have heard of things like prompt injection, uh, trainer, training data poisoning, that is sort of training the data with malicious intent if you will, which then shows up for end users. Uh, you know, prompt injection, trying to get the LLM to do different things it shouldn't do. There's a whole new class of uh, what we call supply chain vulnerabilities. So you think about the open AI ecosystem, uh, people building plugins and custom GPTs, et cetera. Do you really know where that code has come from and what is that sort of vetting process to go into the, the marketplace, if you will? It's not like the Apple App Store, put it that way, not yet. So there's a long way to go there. So kind of a bit wild west, right? So there's a whole new set of supply chain vulnerabilities. The next one is AI-assisted uh, processes. So this is sort of leveraging AI to enhance your security posture, okay? So using AI, a couple of use cases like reducing false positives, understanding context about your application, how it's de deployed, using that to actually apply a different sort of risk profile across vulnerabilities, right? What is the real risk to my business right now? Automatic code fixes. So the ability to, when you have a, a security vulnerability, have the AI actually generate a snippet of code and drop that into your IDE, right? Not in production. <laughs> Let's do it in the IDE where we can test it and iterate, right? And then, you know, obviously interpreting huge amounts of log data um, and doing that risk profiling, as I said. AI-assisted development, this is really about, uh, or the security implications there are, you know, obviously the hallucinations we've heard about, giving you incorrect code, sort of non-optimized code. Uh, of course, generating security vulnerabilities. I'll talk more about that. Even outdated open source packages. Um, if you've, you know, tried to use ChatGPT, for example, to generate blocks of code, it may include libraries that are older versions which have vulnerabilities, right? Um, and then the way these models work is it sort of needs training data, so it might be scanning other code that you have in your repositories, which you may not, not want it to. It might be like secrets in there, or, or well, hopefully not, but um, uh, other sensitive IP that you don't want the, the thing to train on, okay? So at high level, that's just giving you a bit of context. What is the low-hanging fruit? I call it the Gen AI Security Companion. Okay, so this is like the picture over here ha has. There's someone there being the co-pilot helping you uh, using these AI to tools, but making sure that we're scanning the output right for, for vulnerabilities. Because it's, it's really important to do that in sort of real time. You can think of it like Grammarly for code, right, in the IDE. And I'll give you some examples about this. So what, why is this important? Okay, so obviously LLMs are awesome, right? Things like Copilot. By the way, who's, who's experimented with Copilot already? 
yeah, a lot of people. And there's other ones too, like uh, AWS Code Whisperer, um, Gemini, Duet AI from Google, uh, X have their Grok, Facebook, Llama. There's a whole bunch of different ones you can use, right? And there's new up and coming startups like uh, Sourcegraph that's doing some interesting stuff as well. But 92% of developers are using this stuff, whether they're supposed to or not. But you know, if anyone can get to a browser, they can go to ChatGPT and copy and paste code. A lot of companies have embedded uh, tooling that has been approved and with the guardrails inside uh, the development machines as well, Copilot, for example. AWS did some studies as well. Um, to help us using these AI tools, uh, get tasks done 50% faster, 57% faster. Um, and then they also say that 27% of tasks that get started get completed with AI, okay? But let's talk about this. That's awesome, right? I mean, that's amazing. And the, these tools are fantastic, but there is a security concern there, right? We all need to be aware of, which is fine. As long as you have the guardrails in place, then you know, we can go ahead and innovate and use these tools. So New York University and uh, Stanford did some research. Uh, in the case of NYU, they, I think it was like 1,500 plus uh, applications that they, or repositories that they built using Copilot, 40% of which had vulnerabilities. 40% of the code that, that Copilot was generating had actual vulnerabilities, things like cross-site scripting, SQL injection, stuff like that, um, that you know, the AI is producing. And the reason is, is because if you think about the LLM that they're using is training on all types of code, right? Open source projects on GitHub and other places. They're not really distinguishing between good code and bad code, right? Or inexperienced developers versus experienced developers, they're gonna take all of it. So you, you might get lucky when you use Copilot and it gives you secure code, but it actually depends on the prompt, as you'll see in my demos. Um, if you type one or two words differently, you may get insecure code, okay? Um, the point here is you cannot, cannot rely on it, right? So we need those, those guardrails. All right, enough of the slides. Let's get into the demo over here. So what I'm going to do, I've got this um, Spring Java coffee shop app, okay? And I've, I've got a lot of the scaffolding already there, so like a home page but I want to add some functionality using Copilot, right? And then we'll see some of the security implications uh, as we go through the process. Yeah, so created a homepage, I've shipped it. Now what I want to do is, um, there's a, it's a coffee shop app and there's a bunch of products, a bunch of coffees with names and descriptions. I want to actually make, make a search function so I can search for any of my favorite products, okay? So that's what we're going to do. Can everyone see that? Is it big enough? Um, this is, so I've got my repository here. And I'll just go to it on the browser over here. You're welcome to fork this if you want. It's just, um, as I said, Spring Boot with Time Leaf. Make that a bit bigger. Can folks see that? Is that all right? Cool. All right. So. Oops. Let's just start up the application to begin with. It takes a few seconds. And you can see while that's happening, go into my home controller over here. You can see this method, um, the post taking a string input which ultimately goes to this method down here which has does no implementation, right? There's not, it's just returning null at the moment. So if we go over to the actual little website over here, and I search for something, it doesn't work, right, as expected. So I want to build that functionality. So let's do that using Copilot. Okay. So I've got Copilot installed down here. You can see it. I've got uh, the code completions enabled. So. If you're familiar with Copilot, the way you type a prompt in code is just with a comment, right? So I can say, create a SQL query, and it's, it's trying to predict what I'm trying to say. 
um, I'm going to say for, uh, let's see, product underscore name, yep, for description, okay? So it's going to create me a query. That looks pretty good, actually. So just tab and accept that. So it's doing a like query across product name or description, yep. Um, it's even suggesting what I should do next. Execute query, yes. So I'm going to get a bunch of products and then return the products. Okay, nice. Let's redeploy the code and see if it works. Okay. Give it a sec to come up. Yep, so now I should be able to search for something. Equinox, it sounds like interesting coffee. Yep, so that works. I can search description as well. Beautiful. I think I'm ready to ship that to, uh, to my GitHub. So I want to create a new branch first, actually. Can everyone see this okay? Cool. Uh, let's just call it uh, DevOps Days SG. Okay. And let's go ahead and commit that to production, uh, to GitHub, not to production. <laughs> okay, I want to check that in and say added search uh, function. Oops. If I could spell correctly. All right, let's go ahead and commit that. Push it up. Excellent been published in my remote repo. Okay, let's come back over to GitHub over here. You can see three seconds ago this new branch appeared, so let's create a pull request. Just need to make sure I'm in the right fork. Yep, that one. Okay, let's create a pull request. Now you're going to see something interesting here. So with the uh, sneak integration in GitHub, it's doing something called a PR check. So we just issued a pull request and it's going to scan the incoming uh, delta from the branch, right, the incoming code. And hopefully it's going to not allow me to merge the code, right, because there's a SQL injection, okay? We'll go back and have a look at the code in a minute. A few, should take a few seconds. While that's happening, I could just Come back here. We have a little plug-in for the IDE. This is IntelliJ. It works the same way in VS Code, depending on what you're using, or Eclipse, or what have you. In theory, I should pick up a SQL injection here. You can see that the input hasn't been sanitized from the user. It's just put in line with the string, OK? So you can see here, it's put a little squiggly line over where the SQL injection is. And you can come over here. And you can see more details about it. One thing that's quite cool is you can trace where the user input came from. So came into that method, then I passed it through there, all the way down to the database. Let's call this, we call this source to sync. Okay? And then also, what we can do is I'll just move that up a bit. You can see some example fixes down here. We also have something called AI fix, which you can automatically drop in the code. But I just want to look at some other example open source projects where a similar issue was found. And you can see here, they're doing something similar, right? Just pasting in a, a doc ID in line with, this, with a query, and they fixed it using a prepared statement, okay? We'll come back to that in a sec. So let's go back to GitHub, hopefully that's, yeah. So you can see there, some checks were not successful. And you can get similar information over here about that SQL injection. All right, pretty cool. So now I have to go fix it, okay? Get rid of that. I'll leave that there for a sec. Um, and I can actually hack, hack the website just to prove to you that there is a SQL injection. So for example, if you know um, Java and SQL statements, you can terminate the existing statement with a percent quote so it's basically searching for nothing. But then I start a new command. And what I want to do is update the price here, set it to zero. 
Uh, or maybe 50 cents. Let's get 50 cents. <laughs> Just so we're undetected. <laughs> um, so that didn't do anything, but I'm pretty sure it updated. Yeah, you can see down there, 50 cents. All right. so, so definitely a SQL injection. So let's go back to the code. Um, use Copilot to fix it. So one thing that's interesting, I played around a lot with this, is you have to be very specific with the prompt. Okay? And this is kind of, the, this, is, this is an issue because developers are lazy. I know, I was one. Um, they're not going to go the extra mile and put additional words to, to make sure the prompt is very specific. But here, so I learned that someone else fixed this using a prepared statement, so let's try that. So I'll leave that part and I'll just say using a prepared statement. And it's all, Copilot knows what I want to do anyway. So now, if I accept that code, you can see it's put the placeholders in there, right? Uh, create a native query and return, or create the products, then return products. Okay, so this method is automatically sanitizing the parameters for me. Um, so let's go ahead. First of all, what I want to do is make sure that that vulnerability has now gone away. You can see I had... Uh, Six, I think. That should disappear now. Yep, it's gone. All right, so let's go ahead and ship the code. And then come back over here and try and hack it again, just to see if it's fixed. Oh, it's using an in-memory database. That's why the prices have been reset, just for speed. Um, so I'll just try and set the whole thing to zero. That's uh, actually good. That tried to do a search that time, right? You can see the difference. So pretty sure it didn't work. Yeah, perfect. So let's go ahead and ship that code into GitHub again, over here. So I'll just say fixed SQL injection. Okay, now over here, you can see it's kicked off another uh, what we call PR check by committing new code, right? So it's pending, pending, pending. So it's here, it's checking for uh, open source uh, your dependencies, any issues or security issues there, open source licenses, and now the, the code check, like the proprietary code check, is now pending, any luck it should go green, right? Then I can merge there, there we go. So nice, um, amazing. So let's come back to the slides here. So made the product table searchable with user input, shipped it, let's now, oh, too early. Let's look at uh, another type of vulnerability um, and add, to, uh, add a feature to upload my own avatar, my own picture to my profile. So. Um, if I just log in over here, one, two, three, one, two, three. I guess I know it's a bad password. Uh, and then come over here, upload some picture. Let's see, log.jpg. Yep. Nothing happens, right? Didn't work. Okay, so let's go implement that code. That one is in upload controller, upload image. Yes, this is the one. All right, so here we want, we got this uh, multi-part, uh, let me just get rid of this so I can see it better, yep. Multi-part file, and the interesting thing here is the file name. So let's, let's get the file name, get file, yep, get file name. That looks pretty good. Get path, yeah, that's exactly what I want to do, I think. Upload directory, yeah. So get a path. Um, okay, write file to path, yep. Okay. Get person, okay. See, I'm not, I'm not really a coder anymore, am I? 
I was never that good anyway, so <laughs> now I look pretty good. Uh, save image to person. Yep, that looks pretty good. Save person. Add message. Amazing. Okay. The fact that it knows what I want to do <laughs> is, is, is mind boggling. Anyway, um, I think that's right. Let me have a look. Okay, so let's ship that. Okay, let's come back over here. Now, I've got this uh, thing called Burp Suite, which is a free tool to intercept traffic from the browser and the server. I want to do something kind of interesting over here. It's got its own little browser as well. So I can bring up the, the app over here. Yep. I need to log in. Oz. Okay, so let's try that again, see if hopefully it'll work. Okay, image upload successfully. You can see it there, okay? Now, the reason why I want a burp suite is I want to actually look at the payload. So I've got this post over here to the slash upload image. What I want to do is create this repeater, which allows me to basically send the same payload back to the server with slightly different parameter. Okay, so you can see like this binary image thing here. That's the actual image being sent, and this file name. Okay, now what I want to do is actually mess with the file name. So you can see this little logo here, the sneak logo. I'm going to take the actual address, the copy image address, paste it in over here. I want to keep the last bit, but get rid of the first bit and say, uh, what's going on here? Oops. Let's do that again. Okay. So basically, what I'm saying is, Take the binary that I sent before and override that other file on, on the home page. Okay? So let's see what happens there. If I send it back, image uploaded successfully. If I come over here, refresh the page, you can see my face there. Okay? Um, that's called a path reversal a vulnerability. And if I use sneak over here again, it should pick it up. Yes, see the little squiggly line? You can see what I meant by the Grammarly for code, right? And again, it gives you all the information, how the data actually got there, and then the examples too, right? That's a bit long, that one, but let's have a look. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they're, so they're checking to see if the folder in the file path is the same that I intended, right? So I've got, I want to maintain, make sure it's in the upload directory, not any other directory. We can use Copilot here to, to uh, try and so check. Yeah, that's, wow, okay. <laughs> I didn't expect that. I've done this a couple of times, so maybe it's <laughs> remembering, but that's pretty amazing. That's, a, that's pretty much what I want to do, so tab, now I've done, just out of interest, I've done this a few times and it forgot to put the not statement here, which is a totally different behavior, right? So that's kind of important. Um, so I want to say invalid path here, yeah, that looks right. Let me do the rescan. That little red line should go away. We can redeploy in the meantime. Yep. Go on, I think, we, I think we're good. So I can simply come back uh, to Burp Suite, the little browser over here, and try it, just send this again, I think. 
this should work. Send the same payload. Uh, actually, I'll try with a different image because then you won't believe me. So this is a different uh, photo of me. So that one worked, yeah, okay. So let's come back over the target and get the last one, which is this one, is that right? 10.29, yep, Ooh, I better hurry up with my talk to um, send to repeater. Again, it hasn't rolled back because it's on the file system, so it's still my face, but that's all right. Copy the image address, come over here. Do that again. Hopefully this time I get invalid puff. Beautiful. Okay, so it hasn't hasn't updated it. Just refresh. Yeah, it's still my other face. Make sense? Cool. I think I better hurry up here. So, a couple of takeaways. Um, obviously, educate your developers around these tools. Put in some policies and guardrails so developers can have the freedom to use these things, but obviously you need that security companion that I talked about, right? Um, focus on the, the vulnerabilities coming out of the AI, make sure there's no sensitive data being leaked, don't trust, verify, um, treat AI code like an inexperienced developer, like a junior developer. Um, test validate everything, right? Because it's not only about security, it's about functional errors as well. You need to make sure you have a good test suite to test everything. And probably the most important point here is pair you know, ChatGPT or Copilot with a security tool within the IDE. Some folks are doing it like later on in the pipeline in, in Git or in CI, CD. I would say do it as far left as possible in the IDE. That's it. Um, if you want to read more about this, I'll leave this up for a bit. You can scan the QR code. But uh, what we've got in there is just some tips around securing uh, your code when you develop with AI. And also the OWASP um, top 10 LLM vulnerabilities down there as well. That's kind of interesting. This is a new class of vulnerabilities like prompt injection, et cetera, that should be, you should be aware of when developing AI applications. Anyway, um, you can come see me later if you want. We can, I can show you this, but that's it. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.